Bestbookbits.com presents How Google Works by Eric Schmidt and Jonathan Rosenberg. Seasoned Google executives Eric Schmidt and Jonathan Rosenberg provide an insider's guide to Google. From its business history and disruptive corporate strategy to developing new management philosophy and creating a corporate culture where innovation and creativity thrive. Google's executive chairman and ex-CEO Eric Schmidt and former SVP of products Jonathan Rosenberg come to Google over a decade ago as proven technology executives. At the time, the company was already well known for doing things differently, reflecting the visionary and frequently constrained principles of founders Larry Page and Serge Rebrin. If Eric and Jonathan were going to succeed, they realized they would have to relearn everything they thought they knew about management and business. Today, Google is a global icon that regularly pushes the boundaries of innovation in a variety of fields. The written and audio summary can be found on our website, bestbookbits.com. So without further ado, I bring the book summary of How Google Works. Ever since Google was born in 1998, the company has become one of the most valuable and successful companies in the tech world. But despite having a net worth of hundreds of billions and 15 years of history, the company still maintains a startup mentality. How does Google achieve that? By focusing on the so-called smart creatives. Smart creatives are employees who possess a curious ambitious personality and combined it with their tech know-how. Smart creatives. The technological advancement over the past few decades has brought a highly competitive market. With the rise of the internet, consumers become increasingly more demanding as they could easily compare prices and quality reviews of products. But companies had to adjust and produce better products to stand out. The second effect of the tech explosion is that companies could develop products very quickly and cost-effective. Digital products scale incredibly well, which is why a tiny group of engineers can produce a product used by millions of people. It is also easy to outsource work over the internet for very competitive prices. For those reasons, successful companies need to rely on employees who can give them a competitive edge. These employees are called smart creatives by Google. Smart creatives combine ideas from different areas. They combine business and tech expertise in a creative way. They are competitive curious and very ambitious. So ambitious that they wouldn't even ignore direct orders just to prove a point. They are also passionate about their work that they have no problem pulling all-nighters. The hiring approach then is to bring in those types of engineers and give them as much freedom as possible, letting their intrinsic motivation free flow. Smart creatives are the essence of Google. They possess the same nerdy characteristics of the founders Larry Page and Serge Rebrin themselves. We know the quality employees are the engine of a successful business, so they should be a top priority. But how can companies and organizations hire those talents? How to hire smart creatives. Hiring should be a top priority, so instead of relying on just a single opinion of a manager, as is the case in most companies, you should create a committee to represent the company's different viewpoints. A committee consists of an engineer, a manager, and a salesperson, for example. The standard procedure, of course, is reviewing the candidate's resume, but resumes aren't the best way to find the most interesting and intelligent employees. Finding them requires imagination. Google CEO Eric Schmidt asked himself this question before making any hiring decision. If he was stuck at the airport with a prospective employee, would they be able to hold an interesting conversation? But the main question is, how can a company attract those types of employees? It seems like a good paycheck would be the wrong motivator, as smart creatives are mostly intrinsically motivated. Building a creative, free-thinking company culture. To attract smart and creative people, you have to create a company culture which attracts those types of employees. The culture should encourage interaction, as smart people love to talk to other smart people. Freedom. Smart creatives don't like to be in a rigid environment. Employees should be able to speak their mind and have the freedom to make their own decisions. A good starting point to define the company culture is to create the guidelines and principles. Google, for example, outline, don't be evil and make the world a better place. A good way to test your company's culture is by making an indirect remark about something, directed at no one in particular. Larry Page did exactly that in 2002 when he found some ads he didn't like on Google's search page. He left a printed note on the bulletin board in the company's kitchen with the caption, these ads suck. In a common company culture, employees would have perhaps thought it as a funny remark, but as no one in particular was addressed, perhaps everyone would have thought that fixing it is their responsibility of someone else. 
At Google, however, a team of engineers who saw Pages Note on a Friday committed to fixing the problem during their own free time on over the weekend, although they weren't responsible for ads. This kind of devotion is not a norm in every company and can only be achieved by attracting intrinsically motivated employees. Create a climate for innovation. Enforcing innovation really works because external motivators are harmful to intrinsic motivators as described in Drive. How can a company then encourage innovation? You create the conditions for innovation to flourish. One of Google's employees was head of innovation at Yahoo before he joined Google. The reason he quit Yahoo was that his 12-year-old daughter pointed out that wasting an engineer's precious time by lecturing him on innovation wasn't very innovative in itself. So how can we create the right conditions for innovation? One simple rule is trying to shoot for bigger goals by 10x in everything. For example, striving for a product which is 10 times better and has only one-tenth of the cost of its current alternative. Embrace risk. Google dedicates 10% of its budget to experiments. Employees have 20% free time to spend on whatever they like. Thanks to these measures, innovation keeps moving. Gmail, for example, was a result of an employee's 20% time. Create open spaces for collaboration. We learn from the book where good ideas come from that they come from collaborating environments. Innovative companies foster this type of rich environment by creating collaborative working environments and company-wide meetings. At Google, quarterly company reports aren't just presented to the board of directors, but at the whole company. Additionally, the intranet called Mama Stores, where every single product in development so that every employee knows what everyone else is working on. This makes it easier for employees to collaborate and share knowledge, even across different departments. Company-wide meetings ensure further ensures collaboration. Every employee has the opportunity to submit questions and upvote other questions before a meeting takes place. The pro-openness policies allow employees to start conversations. One employee, for example, wrote a user manual for him on colleagues on how to work with him in the most effective way. Retaining good employees. The restless and ambitious nature of smart creators will naturally lead them to create something of their own sooner or later or at least make a change and try something new, like going to another company. So how can you retain them? The answer is by giving them what they most crave, intellectual challenges. If you challenge smart creatives' intellect, they will feel stimulated and more motivated, keeping them happy and away from thoughts of leaving the company. Google Schmidt convinced an employee to stay for two more years at Google by inviting him to participate in a top meeting with the founders. These meetings allowed him to learn new things, and as a result, he stayed much longer. Leaving room for change. How to assure long-term success. Most CEOs would think that their company needs a business plan, but a rigid business plan, in fact, isn't going to work well in most situations. A fixed plan doesn't leave room for fine-tuning, and in the technology business, things change all the time. A company needs to be able to react quickly and adopt to new situations. That's why such a company is better off by certain principles. A collection of principles to apply depending on the situation provide a much more flexible outline than a statistic plan. This type of strategy is called strategic foundation. Jonathan Rosenberg noticed a need for a special plan rather than MBA-style business plan in 2002 when he joined Google, which is why he developed the following more general guide consisting of three points for success. Number one, every new product should be based on a great technical insight and should either increase the functionality of that product or lower its cost. Number two, concentrate on fast growth and scale. Scaling globally will prevent competitors from copying and catching up with their product. And number three, be open. Share your information with the world whenever possible. Enforce discussions instead of decisions. In a traditional company, managers use the hierarchical vertical. That means that decisions are to be made from superiors and that they are not debated openly. Employees have to shut up and follow orders from their superiors. This is not how things work at companies with smart, creative cultures. The decision-making in such a company is more horizontal than in traditional companies. Decisions are debated openly. Management cannot just make up their minds about something expecting everyone to follow the orders. If employees don't support the decision, they won't follow it. Founder Surgery Brin often disagreed over a point with an engineer. Instead of forcing him to go along with his decision, he proposed that half the team follow the engineer's decision and half the team his own. Even then, the engineer wasn't satisfied, and the whole team end up following his solution, not Brin's. 
This type of focus on decision making is effective because it involves more people and thus more brains, and it ensures that employees will support the final decision. Another example once Eric Schmidt, Larry Page, and Sergio Brin all disagreed on a new product feature. In the end, they came up with another, even better solution. To create a similar decision making in your company, you should embrace and create ways to consider every opinion and position of your employees. The managers should enforce discussion instead of decisions. The only thing in consensus can be the timing, as discussions can take time. The focus then should be to leave enough room for discussion. For example, when Google was considering a deal with AOL in 2002, Schmidt recognized the impact of such a decision and arranged daily meetings on the issue for six weeks. By this move, he ensured that discussion would take place and that it would finish within the appropriate time frame. To sum it up, the company culture defines company success, so focusing on creating the right culture and conditions can be the primal way to long-term success of a company. And that's a wrap on how Google works. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, check out our YouTube channel, Best Book Bits, with over 400 video book summaries uploaded previously. Check out our website, bestbookbits.com, for the written and audio version, and also you can download the PDF summary. With categories from biographies, business and marketing, habits, health, leadership, money, personal development, philosophy, psychology, real estate, relationships, sales, spirituality, success, time management, and travel. If you like the audio podcast, check out our www.mixcloud.com forward slash best book bits for over 400 book summaries in audio audio podcast format and last our instagram channel best book bits for daily motivational posts and daily book summaries thanks for watching and listening have yourself an amazing day take care